guys, it's Danny. Hope you all had a great weekend. Today we are going to work with some cat layout orchids. It is time for their routine checkup, just like we did with the Phalaenopsis orchids, if you remember. If you missed that video, I'll link it down below and in an info card on the screen. And I think I do have quite a few things to show you. Do a little recap of my cat layout collection. Well, not all of them. There are so many that it will take an entire day, I think, to go through them. But the ones that are interesting or they're starting to spike, I do want to show them off. See how we are with the mealybug situation, remove some leaves that are yellow and things of the sorts. So I hope that sounds fun to you. Before we go ahead with the video, hold up, I have some plugs to do. So first off, we have new limited edition merch, you guys. The Francis Fox mugs and canvas print, which is kind of like a painting. You can find a link to my shop down below in the description. Check it out if you like them. You have only a few more days at your disposal to purchase them. And also, I got myself my Garden Answer merch. Yay! Oh my goodness, you guys, these hoodies are amazing. I already washed it and it's still so plush, so fluffy. I love it. And yeah, Garden Answer is, I think, my favorite YouTube channel at this point. If you don't know Laura, if you've never watched any of their videos, check the description down below. They are wonderful. With that said, let's get to the little kitties and see how everybody's doing. Alrighty then, so I do have a lot of cat layers because they just enjoy my climate and I can actually grow them outside in the summertime. They love the heat and they grow so, so much better outside. However, in the winter time, which is about three months a year and we're not talking about freezing conditions anyway, I still need to bring them inside because it gets quite cool outside. And sometimes due to the winds, because hey, this is an island, it can get a little bit too chilly, so I don't want to risk it. I bring them in and I keep them either under artificial light. If you know it already, here it is. I'm still super happy with it. If you don't, I have details about it in the description. Check it out. And part of the kitties are here on my southern facing windows and they're sitting right under my AC. They get a lot of ventilation, quite a lot of warmth here and a lot of light. And they're doing great, but I see a major difference between how they behave here versus how they behave outside. Also, I see a difference between these guys in comparison to the others. These ones do receive 12 hours of light per day since I can control it. And I think they grow a little faster or they move a little bit more than the other ones. So yeah, definitely they enjoy the extra light, but these guys are not doing bad either. However, it is time to check up on their roots their flower spikes, let's see about the mealybug situation that I had last year, you know, all of those fun stuff. So I have here a little table, I'm gonna put them here, check them out and show you the most interesting ones. that I just cannot make for the life of me flourish is this one, the variegated one, which is the Moscombi. I think at some point I'm gonna take it, repot it, see what's going on with the root system. It is such a weak individual. It is a first for me with Cattleyas. As you can see, I don't even have roots and I don't know what's going on. So I will unpot it, try it out with a different type of medium. I'm gonna go for sphagnum moss, which is like the friendliest medium for the roots if you know how to work with it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put it back for now, but but soon enough I will work with it. So here's an update on it. It's not doing all that well. It doesn't really follow typical cat layout patterns. Here is something super cute. This is the LC or Catlianthe Rojo Cardinal. It's one of the awarded crosses or cultivars. Here is the tag for it. I actually received this one last year and look at this. She has been doing pretty, pretty great considering that she's been Oops, in this medium for only a few months. And also, I thought I saw something in this dried up sheath. And indeed, there is a little flower spike here. And I'm so, so happy. I used to have this orchid a long time ago. It was my very first cat layout that I ever had. I'll link you to the video down below. And I loved it and I lost it when I moved here. It had Fusarium and it was one of the few cat layers that I actually lost in the move. I lost almost all of my Oncidiums, if not pretty much all of them. But cat layers, no. They're tough little orchids. That one wasn't tough. And I'm really super happy with this one. Look how vigorous it is. I love it and I'm very excited. Okay, here's another fun thing. 
You remember this one? <laughs> Probably you don't, it's a very old cat, Leia. It's the BLC Red Panda Dragon Cat. This is my older one, which has been through a lot, but she is currently pulling through. But hey, you know what? I have another one. I actually received a new one again last year, I think together with the Rojo, and she is doing super, super great. At some point, I thought I would lose my older one, so that's why the replacement. But since I have two now, this one will actually go in my next giveaway. And I think my camera could be readjusted. Okay, here is another one. This one never actually bloomed for me, but it is doing great. This is, oops, okay, the tag is glued to the roots. Let's see if I remember. It's the Brassavola Cucolata crossed with Lelia Purpurata. And it should be wonderful looking. This winter it produced the biggest growths ever but I don't see a flower spike. It's not necessarily the season yet for it. So I'm hoping that this summer it will actually create a sheath and bloom because it's definitely mature and it's definitely doing great. Look at all of these roots. Look at all these chickens. So yeah, happy to see her doing good, but she is getting a tiny bit unruly. Okay, here is something worrying. This is a cat Leia which I purchased locally. I don't have an ID. It's a peachy yellow color. It's beautiful. And we have a sheath, which looks very impressive. But what we also have are some mealy bugs, which is not impressive at all. So this one, I'll put it aside. We'll go to my repotting table and I'll show you how I'm gonna deal with it. But yeah, there we go. This is why I need to do regular checkups because when you have a lot of work, it's easy to lose track and have a pest issue on your hands. I've recently watched some videos on the Amazon spheres from Summer Rain Oaks and the curator there was saying that they do have pests, it's inevitable, even though it's kind of a, an enclosed environment, pests find a way, they always do. So they do rely on non-toxic means, on predatory mites and things of the sorts, but they also rely on practically human force to just look at the plants and not lose the medium and check them up and if they see pests just try to remove them manually right then and there because it makes such a big difference. So if they have issues in their wonderful, wonderful botanical gardens at this point, us with our home growing conditions, with our open windows and things of the sorts, of course we're gonna have pests as well. And it's okay to stay on top of them and remove them manually if you see them you don't have to rely only on the substances. You pretty much have to do the work of the, let's say, natural predators they would have in nature. Most probably in your home, you don't have these creatures, so you kind of have to do their job. And here is a new bloomer. It is the first time that it blooms for me, although it has bloomed in the past. Let me find the tag. It is the Cattleya Jewel Box Orange. And look at that. I have quite some unique flowers. This one is distorted, sadly, but this one looks okay. And I do have some more buds on the way in the back here and there. It's a newer Cattleya to my collection yet again. So I'm guessing that all of this distortion had to do with it adjusting to my environment. But as you can see, we have no problem here. But look at this flower. Can you see we have some extra pigment here? Now, some would consider this collar break. I don't think it is. If you Google this cat Leia, you will see that the flowers should not necessarily look like this. So in my opinion, this is not a sign of a virus or anything. The orchid is very vigorous. It's behaving normally. I have no reason to believe it's a virus thing. And distorted flowers can happen due to various, various reasons. Mealybugs can be one of the reasons. And I had mealybugs issues. So for now, I'm kind of okay with it. I'm not worried about it. I'm generally not worried about viruses with orchids because it's so hard to pass them on. But yeah, just pointing that out. And these are my little kitties or kittens. They are the seedlings. And look how big they grew. It's still gonna take a while until they become mature, but they did grow quite a lot. Okay, I think we should speed this up because we have a lot more cat layers to go. Okay, so here's the mealybug issue. Mealybugs can be a nuisance, but they can also be easily removed because they're very, very sensitive to alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is quite mild, typically on orchid leaves and particularly on something like a Cattleya leaf. So first thing that I'm gonna do is soak a Q-tip and remove whatever I can see. And look at that. Eee, 
Doesn't look good. P.S. These Q-tips are completely biodegradable. This is paper and this is cotton. So this is Johnson's, by the way. So look at the supermarket. I'm sure you can find some that have no plastic whatsoever. They're just made of paper. If you have to use Q-tips, you know, try to go for these. All right, so now that I eliminated all of the ones that I visually see, what are we gonna do with inside the leaf here? Can you see how distorted it is? Poor leaf. Well, one thing that I will do is rip a little bit this sheath. I'm not gonna remove it completely because the leaf is not yet formed, but I wanna have a little bit more access here inside the leaf. And what I will do is spray isopropyl alcohol. And I got these little spray bottles, which are quite useful in a grow room. So what I'm gonna do is just spray alcohol. And this will go inside and eradicate any mealybugs that I have left here. As I was saying, isopropyl seems to be quite gentle, certainly a lot more gentle than ethyl, so that's why I'm using it with these cases. I would not put ethyl alcohol like this. But I think this, ugh, oh, I don't like the smell. <laughs> I just inhaled a bunch of it. Okay, so I think this one is clear. I inspected the other canes as well. It looks pretty good. And I don't think there is any mealybug left there. And the good thing with alcohol is it evaporates. I'm gonna put it outside to completely dry up and then I'm gonna bring it back. So let's continue with the checkup. Look what I found on this shelf. Do you know what that is? That is Maya fertilizer. Luckily, I do have to wash the drapes, but yeah, I'm thinking of actually building her a sort of tree where she can sit, insert an age somewhere in that word, because this is getting out of hand. <laughs> so here's one that has some buds. This is one that I saved from a flower shop last year. It's the one with a lot of cut pseudobulbs. Do you remember? I'll try to find the video. I was a little confused with this one because it would appear that they cut many new pseudobulbs with the potential to bloom. So I didn't know why they did that. Of course, maybe it had to do with aesthetics, but still. Anyway, she has grown beautifully, took a little bit of time to adjust, but as you can see, we're not lacking roots here. And also I see that this growth has buds here. This is a beautiful, beautiful yellow with a lip which has a red margin. It's, it's wonderful. I cannot wait to see it in bloom. And here is one which is almost in full bloom. This is another new one that I received last year. And yep, I would say she's doing great. This is Catlia Trick or Treat. I'm just gonna call all of these Catlia. They do have other names, but most probably everything has been reclassified to Catlia anyway, so I'm not even gonna bother. The former name was LC Trick or Treat, but anyway. Look how beautiful! This is such a beautiful orange, very, very bright and vivid. I don't know if the camera can pick up exactly how vivid this color is. Very hollow. Thank you for joining the conversation. Very Halloween-y colors, aren't they? Well, it's not Halloween, but I still love it. Next year, I'm gonna buy you a parrot suit. How about that? We're gonna go trick-or-treating together, Maya. As always, supervising the operation we have, Captain Maya, without her guidance, none of this will be possible. All right, so here we have a little cat Leia, which could use some help. Excuse the dog, it's not my dog. It's gonna bark for the next 15 minutes, so <laughs> let's all just ignore it. So first I wanna cut away And this is why I usually don't film with my windows open, but today it's just so nice outside. All right, so I'm gonna cut away the spent flower spikes and also look what we have here in the back. We have a spent pseudobulb. It's a very, very old bulb. And what I'm gonna do is just cut it away or remove it. I don't need to unpot the orchid. The medium is still okay. And most probably this growth doesn't even have roots. So I'm gonna find the rhizome and alrighty, here we have it. I'm just going to remove these sheets because they don't do anything and since I'm at it, I'm usually not on top of removing sheets. So I'll take this opportunity to do it now. All right, now it's time to tackle these shelves which are twice as large or even more. Okay, so here we have quite a lot of them. These are my tallest cat layers. So they sit on the upper shelf, which, you know, sky's the limit, or in our case, the ceiling is the limit, but there is enough space. As a highlight, my old gold digger is in bloom, but guess what? This cat layout that I received from one of my viewers 
is also a gold digger. So one of them will go in the giveaway. So here are a few highlights from this shelf. This is an orchid that I purchased hmm, a year and a half ago, maybe locally. I did not know what it was, or at first I was hoping it was the Princess Jackie, and I got it to put it in a giveaway, but these were the older growths. Can you see how tiny they are? This is a new growth that it grew last year, got a little bit of sunburn, it's okay, doesn't really matter, but do you see how tall it is in comparison to the older growths? And the new growths are growing super tall as well. So I'm not sure if it's the Princess Jackie anymore. I don't know what it is. I'm looking forward to the blooms because it keeps getting taller and taller. And that's just something I've never seen in flower shops. Behind it, we have the Valentine's Orchid, the fake specimen. It's lost all of its blooms, so I need to remove all of these flower spikes, which I will do off camera. Next to it, we have... Go ahead, sing. That's it. That was a short song. So here we have the, um, oh, what are you? <laughs> Purple Cascade, there we go. And this one is my, if I'm not mistaken, the Monte Elegante, yeah. This one has been so set back that it's gonna take a heck of a lot of time for it to recover, but it's okay, I have time. The Gold Digger you saw, there in the back, it's a newer Cattleya, which I'm gonna present when it blooms. And here are some not so good news. I don't know if my Francis Fox will wanna bloom. Where is the new growth? Oh, here it is. I see the little sheath is dry. So I don't know if it's gonna bloom this year. It's okay though, there's always next year. Here we have my Siamese Doll Kiwi. It is recovering. It's just not a vigorous grower. Ever since I purchased it, it has not been behaving properly. So at this point, I'm considering a replacement. I don't know, we'll see. We have the Cattleya Leopoldi. It's an older orchid in my collection. Has been sent back a lot of times, but now she's doing great. So I'm hopeful that the next growths will actually bloom because these ones are really, really tall. And in the back, my old no ID pink Cattleya, which bloomed recently. So it looks like everybody's okay on this shelf. Let's move on to the next. Oh, right, so what do we have here? All sorts of little kitties. This is not a kitty, this is a Rincolalia, actually. Now, here is what I'm talking about with setback. This one suffered some setback, and you can see the growths are tinier this year. I don't think it's gonna bloom. I know exactly why it suffered setback. Again, the whole too many roots situation, I couldn't be gentle on the roots when I repotted it. And I also repotted it a little bit at the wrong time, but it's okay, this is my fault. Here we have the Saint Andre, which is looking very nice, but this orchid only blooms in the summertime for me. It has quite a few directions of growth now, but we've reached the edge of the pot. So I'm gonna try to train it a little bit to go back. If not, I think it's gonna need a little bit of a bigger pot, but overall she's doing very, very well. Here we have the Sun May Gold. It bloomed on this new direction of growth. It has another one on the other side. This is a very long lasting orchid for me. When did we feature it? In December? I think so. So for a Cattleya, it is actually pretty long lasting. And here in the back, we have a few more orchids which are newer in my collection, some recovering ones. Oh. This is the one, oh my goodness, you guys. I didn't show you this one in a long time. This is one from last year from Orchids, not Orchids Deluxe, from Orchid Garden. The one that was almost gone when I received it. I do believe this is the one. I'll share with you the video down below. Look at her now. She made quite the recovery. We have good roots. So she's good. I managed to save her. I'm so happy about it. This one will be a beautiful orchid. In the back there, we have another Rincolalia. This is the Mm. Is it? Yeah, it's the Digbihana. This is newer in my collection, but she's doing quite well. These guys don't grow super fast, but she's doing great. Here we have a Brassavola Davis Sanders. This will be beautiful when it decides to bloom. And Cyclia Cordigeras, I have a lot of them because I'm looking for a specific one. But let me show you something. This is my older Cordigera. Look at that. Now, this one has suffered from this fungal infection in the past. Last time it had this was five years ago and I do have video on it. Ever since then, I did manage to keep it under control. This year, it just came back. I'm not entirely sure why, but the orchid is pretty okay. So this looks nasty, yeah, but I know that it will go away. Maybe I kind of stressed it last year. So whatever the little issue this orchid has came back, but this is not Fusarium. I'm not worried about this one since she had it in the past. These leaves will just look ugly. They will fade faster as well, but it's okay. The pseudobulb looks good. 
But yeah, if you see this on your orchids, do not freak out, it's not a virus. Typically, these splashes are indicative of a fungal infection and orchids are perfectly capable of dealing with that on their own. Or if you wanna use fungicides, if you're okay with that, you can use them. However, don't throw your orchid away, it's not a virus. It might look like that, but it's not. So everybody's looking decent here. I need to remove some of these dried leaves, but other than that, we're okay here. Okay, so this is the final shelf on this side and we have two more to go and then we're done. Here we have an intruder. This is not a cat lamb. This is a mule urone sidium, but he's enjoying the light. And look at that, we have new growth here. No flower spikes just yet. He's kind of fairly new to my collection, but he's doing great there. Here's my no ID orange cat the gold digger that I showed you earlier. This one, I have two of these. At some point I will give away one, but I wanna see exactly how they look like because sometimes things can be mislabeled. This is a Lelia zip. I'm hoping this growth will bloom. It looks beautiful. I had the other one bloom last year and it's a beautiful flower. We have something that skipped blooming this year. It should bloom in the summertime. The Hippodamia, but I'm sure this is mislabeled. I think it's a Clan D.A. crossed with Hippodamia. Anyway, it should bloom this summer. The Hawaiian Splash Leia, which we did have in bloom. She's still hanging in there for the past two months, but you can see the flower. It's gonna go away. Some kitties here that you don't know about, they're fairly new. I'm gonna film them when they bloom. And this, oh my goodness. This is my jungle eyes. I also need to repot it because it's outgrown its pot quite a lot. I think it did bloom this summer. Am I remembering correctly? It bloomed quite a few times for me, but poor girl, oh my goodness, she's so dehydrated. I'm gonna go soak her right now. Now, one of the drawbacks with Cattleyas, if you will, is that some of them only bloom once a year. So if you skip one year, then you're not gonna see your orchid in bloom until next year, which is a shame, but many hybrids do bloom multiple times a year. So on this shelf, which is the top shelf and has a lot of height, I have the tallest of my Cattleyas and a few intruders. Here is my Maxillaria tenofolia. Somebody was asking about it. Well, she's growing beautifully. And look at this root system. I do believe this year after she blooms or maybe sooner than that, I will need to repot it because I have to water this one every two days. She just sucks up everything I put her or I put in the pot. She's a very thirsty orchid and this pot is just way too tiny for it, but she's doing absolutely fantastic. Here we have the golden peacock. We had it in bloom very recently. Here is the Lelia purpurata with its very promising sheath. We'll see how it does. I recently repotted actually off season. I was a little bit nervous, but it worked. And here, do you remember I made a video with the tallest cat Leia ever? I'll link you to it down below. It's this one. This is Lelia latonia, or actually latona. I made this mistake in that video as well, which is purpurata cross with cinnabarina. It's been doing great. I have two growths with sheets. This is one of them and another one here in the back, which is much taller. Look how tall these sheets are. Hopefully something will develop in there. Fingers crossed because it's supposed to have a beautiful color. Here another intruder. This is the Dendrobium spectabile. It was set back, but this, or actually last year, it grew a beautiful growth. Look how glossy and beautiful it is. Hopefully it's gonna bloom. I don't know though. This is another cat that you don't know. I will film it when it blooms. And here we have the Epidendrum stanfordianum. It was growing something which dried sadly. So even if it was a flower spike, we will not know. Here's the Harrisoniana and also something that I showed you in a video on my second channel. This is my Princess Jackie and I discovered thrips in her new growth. Oh, come on, focus. Let's do this manually. So I sprayed it with, surprise, surprise, leaf shine. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do check out the video in the description. It's on my second channel. I have a new way of dealing with thrips which work, but I actually wanted to show you the thrips because you can clearly see them in this light. Look at that. They're gone, don't worry. But yeah, when I saw them attacking the sheath, I flipped. Cause this is Princess Jackie and nobody messes with my Princess Jackie. Oh, wow, I need cream. My hands are so dry. Everything is pretty much under control. They don't really attack the foliage or things of the sorts. They do go for the flower spikes, sheaths, buds, things of the sorts, which is not fun, particularly because I'm still dealing with a few mealy bugs here and there, but those are contained as well. But hey, that's the joy of having a lot of plants. Keeps me on my toes. 
Alrighty, let's get to the last shelf finally because we have some blooms there. Alright, so here I do have a few things to show you. First of all, Encyclia alata. Look how big this pseudobulb is! And the orchid is doing great. I'm hoping it will bloom. It just matured, but I don't see a flower spike emerging from here. But with these guys, you don't know. You need to wait it out. So I'm hoping I'll have a bloom, but I don't know. There, it's... Oh, I don't see the tag. I don't have my glasses. It's one of the ICU orchids, you guys. It's the Cattleya Chianci Lodi Song, something of the sorts. It's one of the ICU orchids. Can you believe it? Here we have the tropical pointer having the time of her life. Here, oh my goodness, this is a yellow Ivanagara. And I was looking forward to the blooms so, so much. One is upside down. It's okay. This one will look a little better. But look at this. All of these buds are gone. I had a bit of a millibug situation with it. I didn't see it in time. They were babies. They were very, very tiny babies. So this is all I could save. However, I do have two more spikes developing on this side and I will be on top of it. Hopefully we're gonna have some blooms. I'm going to try to show you inside. Look how pretty it is. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, bad luck. Out of all of these orchids, I had to lose the buds on this one. Uh, it's okay. We need to move on because next to it we have my red no id cattleya which i purchased locally can you believe it and look at this it has bloomed last in september and this is a second blooming and look at that i do believe that the flowers in winter look a little bit different than the flowers in summertime so i'll link it down below to the orchids in bloom video that i made on it uh, back then because to me it just looked different. Now it's looking like when I purchased it. It's something that hybrids can actually do and I'll show you another one which is not acting as usual but anyway here we have some more little kitties which we had in bloom recently the CM Jade. These ones just withered off their blooms. An intruder. This is the Epidendrum Crystal Valley. This is a very old orchid in my collection, but at some point I lost the mother plant. It had Fusarium. I managed to save a tiny, tiny little cakey. I'm not even joking. It was like this. I'll search for the video and I'll show you. And it grew. It took many years, but it grew back. So it's a miniature type of Epidendrum, but I'm hoping for a bloom at some point. This, mm, this is the Potinara Chief Sweet Orange. It's not performing like I expect it to perform. So this one is a question mark. It's been through the Fusarium, so I have doubts with that one, what to do. But here's something fun. This is one that I received from one of you guys. I don't suspect any Fusarium or anything. I just mistreated it, to be fully honest. This is the Elizabeth Fulton Mikhail, or at least I think it is. All of these years, I had unifoliate pseudobulbs on it. And recently, look what it did, a bifoliate pseudobulb. It's doing mighty well now. I'm happy with it, but yeah, hybrids can do that. I lied, I do have a few more cats on this shelf as well, but not so many. I have the Lace Twinkle, which recently bloomed, and a few that you guys already know, but one that you don't know, which is not doing anything sadly at the moment. It doesn't have roots, I'm a little concerned, but I hope she will be okay. It's a new one in my collection. Uh, I think this is one of the very first Cattleyas which I ever, ever wanted. This is the Chocolate Drop Volcano Queen. Wow, that pronunciation. Volcano Queen. So this has been sent by my friend. It's not from around here. It's hard to come by in my area. We don't have roots. So I'm guessing it's one of those orchids which only grows roots and pseudobulbs once a year. So fingers crossed, it's still hanging in there, but it's very dehydrated. It did nothing in the past months, but I'm hoping with the arrival of spring, things will change because I really want this one to thrive. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to spring because things will just explode into blooming. We had a pretty gloomy winter, which is fairly odd for my area, but they're announcing a lot of sun in the next few days. So I'm hoping my orchids will catch up. And I think that's about it. I'm sure I do have some cats here and there, which I didn't feature in this video, but I don't know where they are, to be fully honest. I cannot wait to put them outside. But with that said, hope you've enjoyed this little tour. It is time to end though, because I feel it's a very long video. So you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, experiments, tutorials, tours from time to time. Check out my limited merch down below in the description, along with all of the other links that I told you that I would share. 
and also visit my socials, my Instagram and my Facebook. I do have a lot of activity there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.